Hello, everyone, and God bless you. It's Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. live, coming to you from Faith City Family Church. It's the Wednesday hour of power. How you doing? Hope you had a great week thus far. And no matter what you've been up against, the good news is this. I believe it's going to get better. We're going to have a great time tonight. We've got our, listen, we got one of the best praise and worship ministries anywhere you're going to find. They've got some great praise and worship music with a sister crystals here with us tonight to lead us in that praise and worship. We're going to be taking your prayer requests live. If you've got any request, I would love to get them in my hand. It's so, so easy to do. If you happen to be watching us on Facebook right now, just go to the send message or the comment section if you happen to be watching on the YouTube then the chat section and our wonderful prayer ministry team is here in full force watching their screens ready to get your prayer request that loved one that needs prayer that dream that you have on your heart that mountain that you need to move I'm telling you prayer moves the mountain you might say well are there many people that send in their prayer requests can I show you this Brother BK and I are going to show you this table that is full of prayer requests from time to time. I like to show it because it reminds us that you and I are just one of many who have requests, who need God to intervene in the situation. And we would be honored to pray for you. Every request that comes in, we keep it. None of them are thrown away. We continue to trust God and believe for you and with you and so i invite you get those prayer requests in those that are in the church sanctuary would you stand with us at this time please we're going to open up with a word of prayer can we stretch our hands out to one another those that are here those that are watching father in jesus name we thank you that the bible says that when two or more get together in your name you are there in the midst of us and Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those who were able to come to the service tonight that you would touch them and minister to them and meet their every need and give them the miracles that they need. Those of you that are watching right now, may the presence of the Lord come into your house, into that space there, into that apartment, wherever you are watching this right now, whenever you're watching this right now, may the Lord touch you and heal you and deliver you and may this hour of power make a significant and eternal impact in your life in jesus name we pray amen and amen let's all join together and give the lord a loud praise right now praise the lord come on clap your hands a little longer a little stronger thank you jesus lord we thank you and we give you praise well, I want to call on Sister Crystal. I ask him if she would come. We are Give her a hand right now at the music ministry. Let's have a great hour of power. Yes. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Isn't our God truly awesome and worthy to be praised? Hallelujah.
continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we worship you. We adore you. And Father, there is no one like you. God is lifted high. The Son of 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 God is lifted high. Would you raise your hand and praise the Lord in church? Praise Him at home watching. Would you praise Him right now? There's such an anointing when Crystal was 
leading that song. And just like I saw the light of God on this young lady, there's an anointing in this room. There's an anointing in your room right now. Whatever you need, reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. He's not too busy to hear your cry. On the Wednesday hour of power, God has a blessing with your name on it. Right now, I take authority over the devil in the name of Jesus, and I command him to take his hands off your life, his hands off of your loved ones, his hands off of everything that you're believing and trusting God for in the mighty name of Jesus right now. God, we praise you. Give him another wave offering of praise. I feel his power. I feel his presence. God is at work right now on the situation. We're getting ready to pray for all of the prayer requests, whether those requests in here at the church service or whatever the prayer ministry team has brought forth at this time. Brother Harmon, our outreach director, will be coming and bringing those prayer request because we believe that God is going to intervene. God is going to intercede in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Brother Harmon. Thank you so much. Sister Felix says, please pray for Stephen and the whole family. Uh, we are being evicted and we need a new home. How many know God is able to work that out? It may not look good, but they only have till the 7th of December. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we're believing for a miracle turnaround. And before the 7th, you will have a home. You'll have a place to live. Somebody shout amen right now. We know that God is able. It is not too hard for God. This is pray for the persecuted people of faith that are everywhere in the world, especially our brothers and sisters in the underground church in China. How true this is. There are Christians right now putting their lives on the line in countries who forbid them to worship Jesus Christ. We pray for them right now, oh God. May they stay strong in their faith in the name of Jesus. How blessed we are to be able to worship freely, oh God. Be with them, help them in the name of Jesus, the persecuted church, we pray in Jesus' name. Lydia says, I need prayer for successful surgery and recovery. Janice, I'm asking special prayer for my sister Debbie who is having challenges but God is good and our trust is in him she says amen Dorothy Dorothy Bryson pray for my family and myself and keep my pastor in prayer thank you so much for that as well God bless you sister faith pray for my sister grace who has been in the hospital Andrea please pray for our nation, local, state, and community leaders, especially the Faith City Family Outreach Team. Thank you so much for that. Rorlene, prayers for the families of the Anderson and Hunters and our country that it will heal. Thank you, Brother Harmon. Yes, a praise report from Alicia Roberts. She said, I wanted to give pastor my praise report after prayer and patience the judge has blessed me with sole custody of my son have out a big praise the lord you know she's happy about it my goodness we're all happy about it i remember this brother Harmon. i think from sunday she was really crying out to god to be able to have her son back you know god is able can i hear an amen it's it's not too late to get in your prayer request faith city family church facebook send message the comment section youtube the chat section kimberly pray for me and my kids corey alexandria and kimberly and for a financial blessing yes we will the boyers please pray for healing for the boyer family grandfather is eyesight grandmother diabetes mom diabetes and the aunt losing her eyesight god is able this is a unspoken anonymous after prayer and patience 
Thank you, Jesus. The prayer has been answered. That's from Anonymous there. Let's give the Lord a praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes the person doesn't want the name. We honor that. And uh, Sister Rushton, on Monday I was going through something at my job, and I reached out to Sister Jeanette alongshore, and she sent me a prayer message that got me through my meeting. I'm thankful for her. God is good. Hey, come on. God is right there when you need him. Can somebody shout a loud amen right now? And so we're going to get ready to pray. We're going to believe for miracles. I want us right now in the church to stretch your hands out towards the request as Brother Harmon is coming in just a moment. And he's getting the anointing oil ready. We're going to, and I think he's going to pause another minute for another request. That's all right. Church. Get your hands stretched out if you don't mind, congregation. You're so good to pray for the many requests that come in. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, we begin to praise you for what's going to happen in this prayer. We begin to thank you that when two or more agree in prayer that something begins to happen in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, I begin to lay my hands on these uh, in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we pray for healing, uh, for deliverance, uh, for finances to come in, uh, for the dear family, Lord. They're going to be evicted and they need a place to live by December the 7th. Uh, God, we pray for that miracle as Brother Harmon is bringing the anointing oil. God, we thank you that you are able. Linda said, pray for my mom's healing and strength. She had a stroke as well as COVID-19. Please pray for my family as well. Another one just coming in. John Coleman, prayer, pray for our friend Steve. He has fallen and broken his arm. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take the oil and we anoint everyone in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Steve, may your arm heal miraculously we pray in the mighty name of Jesus for the lady who had the stroke with COVID-19 for all of the other requests that have come in oh God we pray for the miracle breakthrough we pray for the turnaround as brother Harmon and I agree together in prayer in the mighty name of Jesus now Lord by faith we receive it by faith we call it done right now in Jesus mighty name hallelujah I feel the anointing of God being released on every prayer request somebody watching right now you need to get your request in on Facebook or YouTube the, I'm telling the anointing is moving right now I stretch my hands out to everybody in the service whatever you need I command the devil to loose and to let go right now I command the devil to take his hands off of the property of God I, I ask the Lord would heal you would bless you uh, would deliver you, uh, would take your situation and turn it around in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm praying for those of you watching. Uh, I stretch my hand out to you wherever you are, and I'm praying that the power of Jesus uh, would heal you. Stretch your hand out towards mine right now. There it is. Touch my hand by faith on the other side of that screen uh, right now. We agree together in prayer, and God, I believe the breakthrough is coming. Uh, I believe the turnaround is coming uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, and by faith we receive it and by faith uh, we call it done uh, would it be all right if we raised up our hands and gave God a loud praise uh, Lord we thank you Lord we praise you Lord we my, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit uh, God is at work in this house right now he's at work in your house right now somebody get up at home and give him a praise in your bedroom uh, in your living room uh, in your kitchen uh, give him a shout uh, because Jesus uh, has the last Last say on your situation. I'm here to tell you God will do just what he said he will do. He is able. He is able. He is able. God is able to do what he said that he would do. So God, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor of victory right now. I feel victory in this house. I feel victory in your house. Victory, victory, 
victory in the name of Jesus. And I'll tell you of all the many miracles that I have seen over the years, I praise the Lord for the miracle of salvation. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. You might be in the service tonight. You might be watching right now. And you don't have peace in your heart. If you were to go to bed tonight and not wake up, you might say, oh, that wouldn't happen to me. I've had at least four funerals in the, in the history of my ministry where people went to bed and did not wake up. One was a 15-year-old track star. Another was a grandmother that went to bed, never woke up. I could go on and on and on. You don't know when your last day is. But I'm going to tell you, if you will get saved, you can have peace that passes all understanding. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid because you know your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Can we make sure that you're saved? Can we make sure that everybody knows Christ tonight? Can we pray this prayer out loud together right now? Come on, everybody, say it loudly with me. Say it. Say, Jesus, right now, I believe you died on the cross for all of my sins right now. I ask for forgiveness. I ask you to wash my sin away, to come into my life, and to save my soul. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. In Jesus' mighty name, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. If you prayed it and you meant it, you are saved. Your name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Lord. Those in the sanctuary, you may be seated. And those of you watching, welcome. We're just glad to have everybody, whether in person or virtually, worshiping God with us together for the Wednesday Hour of Power. My goodness, what one hour can do. Oh, yes, I think of that old gospel song. It, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others He'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you give up on what you're believing for. God is able. We come to that point of the service where we ask you to be generous in your support of the work of the Lord. I'm so thankful that as we are continuing to go through the year 2020 together, that the outreach ministries here at Faith City, ministering to the homeless, ministering to people out on the streets, are going forth. Regardless of the pandemic, and yes, we use many precautions, the first thing we pass out when we're out on the streets is PPE material. Number one, above everything else, because many of these dear people don't have the mask and the glove that are needed. But then we give them other necessities to make it through the day. This same day, earlier, just a few hours ago, some of our volunteers were in one of the rooms of the church preparing the Thanksgiving boxes of love. There's a picture of it right now. Those in church, maybe you can see it, yes. And I'm looking at my monitors. I see it, yes, online as well. Those, are, those weigh over 10 pounds each. And they're packed and jammed with life-saving survival materials, dry food, things that people who are homeless need. Look at that for a moment. As a matter of fact, I feel that right now. Stretch your hands out towards that picture. Father, we anoint every package of love. Lord, that's not all of them. There are many, many more. The boxes of love for Thanksgiving. We anoint them to save the lost, to, to help those who feel like there is no hope. In the name of Jesus, Lord, except for you, it could be us on the street with no place to go. So, Lord, we thank you for using this in the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, Brother Harmon, I think, don't you have some socks or something here that need to be blessed? Where are they at, brother? Can you get them right now? 
Brother Harmon, the outreach director, is going to get them. We've had some people who got together and, and got some very, one of the most important things that homeless people need are socks to keep their feet warm. And, and we're so blessed that people got together and said, we're going to, to, to rally around this outreach support. A, a, a vision here and make sure that we help make sure there's enough socks for the homeless people and the children and every one of them. In a few moments, I, I might be able to say a prayer over them and bless them. But I want to talk to you. You see, as we're approaching Thanksgiving, there's Brother Harmon. He's bringing them now. See, we approach Thanksgiving and Christmas. We need your help through your tithes and generous offerings. Not only that the church may continue, but that we may continue to do the work of the church. Brother Harmon, if you don't mind, you can just, yes, as you hold them in your hand, hundreds of brand new socks, beautiful. Can we consecrate them to the work of Jesus? Let's stretch our hands out to them. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, these socks are going to keep somebody's feet warm. Somebody, Lord, living on a sleeping bag on the streets. God, these socks are going to have an anointing on them. We believe it. And, Lord, they're going to feel the love of Jesus. And when somebody said, who gave me these socks? We're going to tell them, Jesus gave them to you. So, God, we consecrate them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Harmon. Somebody said, well, I've got my own set of troubles. Can I take you to a verse in the Bible? Isaiah chapter 58. Brother Leonard, in the 58th chapter of Isaiah, verse 10 and 11, it says that when we're going through troubles, the most important thing we can do is to help somebody else who's in trouble. And in helping them and giving to them and supporting financially, helping others, God said, I'm going to help you. He said, if you draw your soul, you draw out your soul to the hungry, and you satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light rise in obscurity, and your darkness will be as the noonday. He said, I, I will also guide you continually. I'll satisfy your soul in drought. I will make fat your bones, and you will be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Friend, if you'll be a part of a ministry who's blessing others, if you bless what God blesses, God's going to bless you in the name of Jesus. And so before I pray, I want to ask, would you be generous in your tithes, giving that 10% of the money that God blesses you with every week. Would you, would you be generous in your outreach offerings? And I'm reaching out to you from my heart. Would you do it right now? Here are giving options you can use. You can do it right now. Brother Harmon, let's pray they do it right now. The needs are right now. And Jesus will bless you right now. I believe if you begin to do these giving options while you're doing them, the blessing's headed your way. You can text to give your tithes and offerings. You can choose that option. It's safe and secure. If you'd like, you can use the Cash App option. The dollar sign, Faith City FC2, lower or uppercase doesn't matter. Or you can also use the option by going to faithcitynow.com and clicking that word donate. Well, all of these are safe and secure. And as I was saying a moment ago, would you do that right now? Could we have some difference makers? People saying, you know what, I'm going to sow generously. And I'm going to sow a seed, believing that God's going to bless me and my family. You can also send in by mail your tithes and outreach offerings right here to Faith City Family Church at 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. That's 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 197. Zero two. And those in the sanctuary, if you'd be so kind to place your tithing and offering envelopes in the bucket on your way out at the conclusion of the hour of power. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am praying. I'm praying, Lord, for a great showing of support. People saying, Pastor, I get it. 
God told Isaiah, and he's telling me, he's telling all of us, that if we'll bless others, God's going to bless us. If we help somebody who's down, God's going to help us when we're down. If we bless somebody else's child, God's going to bless out my child. So, God, we pray for a great blessing tonight during the hour of power. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, and I'll be back in just a moment. Bless you for helping us be the Lord's hands extended to others. I'd like to share just a couple of things here. First of all, that this coming Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday. We always have a special Sunday before Thanksgiving comes upon us. And of course, that's the 22nd at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., whether in person, online, or in your car, in the church parking lot, and we're going to be having Holy Communion. We have ordered these very special sealed communion sets. They're personal. Nobody has touched the wafer or the juice. They've been put together for these special COVID-19 times. So you don't have to worry about the safety of taking Holy Communion. Now, those that are gathered in the church tonight, we have these sets in the church. And on your way out, you can help yourself in the church lobby to one of your own personal communion sets so that you can be a part of Thanksgiving Sunday communion. Now. This Saturday, Brother Al Wolfolk and a team from the church will be here on the church property. And we're not going to bring that graphic up yet. Let's stick with the Thanksgiving if we could. Thank you. This Saturday, from 12 noon to 3, Brother Al and the team will be at the church and we're going to have drive up get your communion that means you'll just drive up to the front of the church and the team will come right to the window of your car and give you your own special sealed communion set it's just a drive-through get your communion materials so if you're watching on sunday or in your car you can participate in the special thanksgiving communion so i hope you will participate in that also, I would like to jump right now to a special promotion coming up in December. We're doing a special promotion in December, and it's coming up. We call it the special December gift card blessings promotion. And uh, I'll wait till I see it on the floor screen for the streaming. There it is. Amen. And we call it the season of giving gift card blessings watch live promotion and we are encouraging more and more people as they are to watch us live on sundays at 9 a.m and for everyone that watches in december live whether at 9 or 11 we will be looking for your comment through facebook or youtube to tell us why you need this blessing of a hundred dollar gift card because so many families are in need we will be giving away two blessings every service 
for every Sunday in December at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. So make sure that if you're going to virtually go to church, that you are watching us live or attending live. It goes for those that attend live in the church as well. God laid on our hearts to do this because there are some families that are having it extra, extra hard this year. And so we not only want to do outreach on the streets of our communities, but we also want to reach out to those that are a part of the church family as well. So it's gift card blessings every Sunday in December, attending or watching live. I believe it's going to be an exciting time. And of course, not only this Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday, but next Wednesday will be our Thanksgiving Eve service as well. Would you join me in putting your hands together for our praise and worship music ministry right now? Let's give a big praise to the Lord. We appreciate each and every one of them. Man, we're giving it 110 during this whole season of the pandemic. And let me just say that God is blessing us because every seven days there are multiple thousands of people tuning in on Facebook and YouTube to God be the glory and more tuning in all the time. And you know what? There are some that can attend church, but we fully understand not everybody is ready to go to church. Not everybody can attend that's quite all right. That's why whether you're in person or whether it's virtual or whether it's in your car, we're all one big family together. I'm your pastor, and we're going to walk through this thing together. Can I hear an amen? Let's give the Lord a big praise. God is good. Well, I just want to get ready for the word of the Lord right now. I feel it so strongly in my spirit that God gave me this message for this particular Wednesday hour of power. And here it is. It's five rules of battle concerning spiritual warfare. Five rules of battle all taken and harvested out of the Bible and out of the scripture concerning spiritual warfare. Many of us, if not all of us, have had seasons of spiritual warfare. I want to remind you, you can still get your prayer requests in. Our prayer team is watching their screens right now. We'll be closing with another prayer at the close of the hour of power. If you're watching on Facebook, put action on your faith. Faith and action will get a reaction from God. If you're on Facebook, send message or comment. would work great on YouTube, the chat section. But faith is a muscle. Work that muscle of faith and get your prayer requests in. I want to get them in my hand. If you've ever been in a spiritual battle, you know it's not easy. You know that the real battle in life and the battles in life are first won in the spirit. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible said in Zechariah chapter 4, Verse number six, these words. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, For it is not by might, nor by power, but it is by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. A spiritual battle is not won in our own strength, in our own ability, or in our own wisdom. It is only won by the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God. If you're in a spiritual battle right now, it could be for your health. It could be for a family member. It could be for uh, some stronghold that's been in your life, a habit that is hard to break. Many times our condition is not physical. Many times our condition is spiritual. Because when the spirit is not right, many times it'll affect our rest, our sleep, how we act, our emotions, and all of those kinds of things. And that's why we have to deal with the devil head on and realize we must do these five things beginning with number one. When you are in the middle of a battle, a spiritual warfare battle, 
First of all, you must know and speak the Word of God. The most powerful words that will ever come out of your mouth are the words of God. Not your words, not my words, because my words are just words. But when I say the Word of God, I say power. How many know God's word changes the atmosphere? God's word changes the situation. The Bible said that Jesus sent his word and healed the people. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12, it says these words. For the word of God, the words of God, the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I go back to the beginning, for the word of God is quick and powerful. Friend, when you are fighting a battle, you listen, if it's a battle concerning your health, get out every scripture you can, Google the scriptures about health and begin to quote them by his stripes we were healed. First Peter 2.24, quote the word of God, Isaiah chapter 58. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. And let me tell you, the more words you say, the more power you're saying into your life and into your situation. When you're up against things and it looks impossible, Speak the word of God. Just like the lady earlier during the hour of power that said, my prayer request is, I'm being evicted by December the 7th. I don't have a place to live if I don't get one. But you know what? She's going to speak the word of God. Philippians 4, saying, for my God shall supply all my needs uh, through his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, sister, if you're watching me right now, you're not going to panic. You're going to stand on the word of God, and God is going to come through, and God is going to be glorified and people are going to say how did you get through it you're going to say it was the power of almighty God I'm talking about five rules of battle concerning spiritual warfare rule number two your conversations should reflect the mentality of a conqueror what I say really matters my words really really matter and I feel I'm supposed to say this, that sometimes we as Christians make it harder on ourselves because we don't get our emotions in check and we begin to speak in a negative way. Let me tell you, your words can take you up or take you down. You can go visit somebody in the hospital and tell them positive things and give them faith. Or you can tell them negative things and make them feel like they'll never live and they'll never get through it. The Bible said in Proverbs 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the what? What's that word of the, of the tongue? And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I need to speak words of life. I need to start my day saying, this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day of blessing in my life. Blessings are chasing me down. Blessings are coming after me. I have favor with God and with man. The Lord goes before me and he paves the way. I'm not worried. I have peace that passes all understanding. What I say many times will cause the outcome to change in my life. If you keep saying, well, this is going to drive me crazy, then it probably will. If you keep saying this is the death of me, I'm about to lose my mind, you just might. But if you will stand up against it and say that God is for me, who can be against me? If you will stand up and say greater is he that is in me than he that is within the world. If you will stand up and say every place that my feet will walk, God has given it unto me. Uh, if, if you will stand up and say I have favor with God and with man, you know what's going to happen? Favor is going to start coming in to your life. As a matter of fact, God is going to draw people to you to give you favor because birds of a feather flock together. As a matter of fact, some of your negative friends are going to all of a sudden disappear because they cannot stand the atmosphere.
atmosphere of positivity and faith. So I'm telling somebody right now, change your words and change your life. Change your conversation and change the outcome. Change what you're saying and change how you start feeling because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Can somebody give the Lord a shout right now? I believe somebody just got delivered, and I believe from now on you're going to open up your mouth and you're going to say what God says. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel like shouting. Rules of battle concerning spiritual warfare. Number one, you must know and speak the word of God. Number two, your conversation should reflect the mentality of a conqueror. Number three, you must take your authority over Satan in the name of Jesus. You might say, hold on a minute. You telling me I have authority? You do, but it's only through one name. Now, by yourself, you don't have authority over anything. But when you say, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, because the Bible said there's only one name under heaven whereby men may be saved, and that is the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, Philippians 2, 9, and 10, for God has given Christ a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, everything in earth, under the earth, and above the earth, everything must bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness, you must bow. Depression, you you must bow. Sleeplessness, you must bow. Poverty, you must bow. Loneliness, you must bow because there's one name that makes the difference in this world and the name is Jesus. Somebody give him a shout right now. Somebody shout the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 10. The name. Note this verse. The name of the Lord, which is Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it, and they're safe. The name of the Lord. That's why whenever you pray, you better pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible says pray in the name of Jesus. When you walk around your house, stretch your hand out in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood over this house, over this property. I plead the blood over the children, over the grandchildren. I plead the blood of Jesus over this car when I drive it. I plead the blood of Jesus over me while I sleep. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on this checkbook and on this debit card. And I'm praying that God will send forth what I need in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. When we do outreach, we take back Kensington in the name of Jesus. There's no power in the church name. There's no power in the preacher's name. But when the devil hears the name of Jesus, he knows he's in trouble. Devil, you can't have this neighborhood in the name of Jesus. You can't have the children all on drugs in the name of Jesus. Devil, you can't have this pandemic. You can't have everybody on COVID-19 in the name of just somebody shout in the name of Jesus. And friend, when you pray and when you're in warfare, you got to use that name. Number four, our fourth battle, our fourth rule of battle, forgive me, concerning spiritual warfare. Our fourth rule is you must in faith, in faith, spiritually clothe yourself in spiritual armor each day in prayer. Now, the Bible says that we've been given the armor of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 13, it says, Wherefore, take unto yourself, you, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to keep on standing. You said, what's the armor? I'll tell you, the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, loins girt about with truth. There's no armor for your back. There's no armor for your back. 
God didn't mean for you to run from the devil. He meant for you to advance. He meant for you to overcome in the name of Jesus. So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we put on our armor. I want everybody to say this after me. Say, in the name of Jesus and by faith, I put on my armor. To say it, I put on the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, my loins good about with truth, and the breastplate of righteousness. If you believe it, would you shout amen right now? It's as real as it can get. And then finally, number five, as our musicians begin to find their way. And remember, it is not too late to get in your prayer request. The miracle power of Jesus is working. The prayer team is ready to take them right now. In a few moments, I'm going to be praying at the close, believing for your healing, for your miracle, for your breakthrough. If it's on Facebook, you're watching, send message, comment, YouTube, the chat section. But fifthly, our fifth rule of battle concerning spiritual warfare is you must respect the power of prayer and fasting. There's power in prayer. I say it all the time. Little prayer, little power. Lots of prayer, lots of power. Friend, if you, you might say, well, I, I, I don't have time to drive by the church every day and pray for an hour. There's nothing in the Bible that says you got to be in a church to pray. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. It says in the book of Matthew, and when you pray, enter into your closet and pray, and the Lord who seeth in secret will reward you openly. You can pray in your car. You can pray in your house. You can pray in your closet. You can pray anywhere at any time. Isn't that a beautiful thing? But if you will pray more, you're going to have more victory. If you will pray more, you're going to keep your mind stayed on Jesus Christ. If you will pray more, you're going to get more mountains to move in your life. And get this, get this, fasting, that doesn't mean you're to fast yourself into a state of hospitalization. That is not in the Bible. But fasting means denial. But sometimes God will say, I want you to deny yourself. God may say, I want you to fast that cup of coffee for five days. I want you to fast. Pastor Hare, I know how much you like coconut cake. We all know how much like Pastor Hare likes coconut cake. But the, he might say, Pastor Hare, push back that cake for five days. Listen, fasting is denial. Fasting is discipline. And while you're pulling back from something, during the time that you would normally be drinking that coffee or having that cake or whatever you're doing, you're in touch with God. You're praying. You're talking to God. It's a time of focused prayer and a time of discipline. In James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In Isaiah 58, verse number 6, is not this the fast I've chosen to loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. I want us all in the church sanctuary to stand, please, at this time, if you would. And we're going to pray that God will help you through your seasons of spiritual warfare in the mighty name of Jesus. Would you stretch your hands out towards me right now, Father, in Jesus' name. I know good and well that people who've attended tonight, many are in a time of spiritual warfare, the devil coming against you. But I'm here to tell you that God has brought you this far by faith. I'm here to tell you that everything is going to be all right in the name of Jesus. You take on the whole armor of God. Speak the word of God. Make sure your words are words of a conqueror. Take authority over the devil in the name of Jesus. Put on the armor of God each day. And I pray for those of you that are watching right now that the Lord will help you through your season of spiritual warfare in Jesus' name. And before I say amen, another prayer request. Eddie Lang, praying for the safety and whereabouts of Dwight Hosner. Father, we pray that they will find Dwight, that he will be safe, that everything will be all right. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And I want to remind everybody present here tonight, present, make sure you get your personal communion set 
That'll be in the lobby when you drop off your tithes and offerings. Saturday from noon to 3, Brother Al and the team drive up communion sets. Just drive up. They'll bring them to the window of your car. And join us this Sunday for Thanksgiving Sunday. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'm going to step over here, congregation. I want everybody here tonight. Come up, give me a little bump. I want on my, on my elbow. I'm going to tell you I love you and thank you for coming tonight. Come on up here. Oh, the Lord told me to do it. He said, tell them that you love them. Tell them that you thank them for being here tonight. God bless you.